KBC English Service. Your number one radio. KBC English Service. There's been an outcry on social media platforms with regards to president sentiments that he doesn't understand why Kenyans are rock. And there is one man who's been on the forefront of defending presidents. That is David Matanga Chapan African Forum. He joins us live on phone. Dr. Matanga, good to speak to you one more time. Why do you think president is always right despite Kenyan public fury? Thank you very much, viewer, uh, listeners of KBC Worldwide, wherever you are. First, the president's statement is, has been taken out of context. I am not the spokesman for the president, but the, from the understanding of the statement, is the president was actually cautioning and cautioning the public officers, heads of press staff, to pay out to people who have done supply, such that the money can circulate. Creditors, they were creditors, and the government is a debtor. Therefore, they have they owe money to creditors who should now be paid such that the money can circulate. That was the meaning of the whole thing. In African context, the president was saying, why is the money not paid? Yet the people have supplied. You remember there are several traders, several community members, several businessmen, suppliers, people saying they, their shop are under the suppliers need the, the payment. People where they got the goods need payment. They have been making, a, you know, serious complaints to to the government and the president has had. The president of Republic of Kenya, he has, and he has people who tell him what is supposed on the ground. And that is why the president was making it in that format. And that is not that he was saying there was no money or whatever, but he said the officers must use the money and carefully utilize the money in construction, in supplies, pay back people, such that the money can circulate with all the projects that are being done. There must be people. Of course, when the money is in circulation, you can make more and do more projects, buy more things, deliver more things to the government. That was the position. In terms of, you know, whatever is happening in the headlines, of course, Big Four Agenda is the key priority for President Kenyatta. Do you think he's, he's, he's geared towards the same? The Big Four Agenda are a, a priority. Now it is time to find out with the remaining years that are left to find out which one can fit where. And that is exactly what the big four, big four agenda is. For example, in Masabit, what do people want? They want tents and a borehole, good water and health care. There is one big thing that you cannot run away. Two of them, you can't run away from them. One is the food security. You need food in order to talk. Two is health care. You need a good health person to grow the food, to make the industry sleep in a house. So the president is succeeding in the health care that very soon the whole country, everybody going to register under the health care, universal health care system, such that the treatment for people, for everybody in all the rural areas will be available. Food security is very crucial for any country. Therefore, people in Masabit, Boyale, Waji, eh, Garissa, eh, anywhere in the areas where food is not only growing crops, food includes animals. Husbands, we need to improve fishery. We need to improve ponds, get people to have boreholes, turn the whole same arid areas into uh, fertile lands that people can grow food. That is what the president's agenda big four is, and that is where he needs that help from Kenya. You've written some article with regards to electoral justice. What does this mean, considering that, you know, that has been the main undoing for Kenya during the previous elections, Kenyan shedding blood, especially after the outcome of presidential polls. What What's the way forward for electoral justice? The only solution that everybody will be happy about Kenya is this, to stop electoral injustices, electoral violence, electoral conflict. The only way that you can stop it is to introduce electoral process that gives equality, quality of the elections. And that is the way why the president and Dr. Raira Amoro Dinga decided to say enough is enough. They have, I don't know what is going to come up in the BBI, whatever it is, but if they don't touch the electoral systems, that's what I've written. And I'm very frank, I've balanced, I've condemned both sides of violence. It is not one side. You cannot, for example, 
in your life, steal somebody's shirt, then you wear it, and then go around and tell people, I beat him yesterday and I wore the shirt. That cannot be accepted. And let people in Kenya condemn such action. This type of action and the type of showing off after you have defeated an enemy is what the president is trying to heal, to make sure that people don't go around boasting after violence has occurred. There was no need of violence in this election, by election. If this happens today, what will happen tomorrow in a bigger election? Therefore, that's why I've written that article from the bottom of my heart. As a conflict resolution expert and as a political scientist, I have written it seeing from the experience that I've seen in Kenya. We don't learn. We always make it. We wait. We forget. Then we wait. Then we forget. We go underwater when it is raining, thinking that the water will not reach out. We are in that chaos. Therefore, it does not need any violence from which side it comes from, whether it is Jubilee or ODM, it must be condemned under the Electoral Commission. Do you know, can I tell your viewers, if I were the chairman of the Electoral Commission of, of this country, I would have notified the entire criminal election. Kenyans and even Kenyan politicians across the divide are already discussing about Building Bridges Initiative report, yet it's not yet released. And it seems Kibra by elections that were won by uh, Imran Okoth, the brother to the late Ken Okoth, has, you know, led to this because now the two opposing camps in that by-election are exchanging a war of words against each other over BBI which is yet to be released. Do you think this will destabilize the handshake? First of all, the handshake cannot be dis destabilized. Everybody, anybody who has lived under the, the last three years will know that the handshake works. We used to have people demonstrating every morning. It is not there. Some of us could not go to places like Kondeli in Kisumu. I now go there and I can have a drink, eat food and come out. That handshake has worked. And that is the only route that Kenya can unify, uh, take as a country, unify as a state called the Republic of Kenya. When you go to places in Tanzania, people don't call themselves by tribe. We have gar gas, you know, we have played the politics of garrison. We are creating garrisons. We are creating warlords in the political science. If you are going to create areas that these are my people, these are my, these are my people. That is politics of guns, which any political scientist can tell you it is the worst type of politics that any country should have. Let's look for a, 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 a medicine that will cure this completely until Kenya becomes stable, united, prosperous country in Africa, the country that everybody looks up to. Before I let you go, your parting shot. My parting shot is support President Uhuru Mwingai Kenya. He has done his best. He has tried to make sure that everything in Kenya comes. But above all, he needs a unit of purpose. He wants to achieve a unit of purpose. Those who are doing other campaigns, destabilizing his programs of the a big four, please help him. Let's go there. Let's reach Jerusalem together. Thank you very much. Your number one radio. KBC English Service.